the new topic called organizational change and it's one of the challenging uh, topics in uh, organizational behavior because uh, every manager is supposed to understand the concept of change and introduce and it is definitely not easy because if you want to bring about change in the organizations uh, it's a group of people would always resist either in the on the part of management or on the part of employees any of these groups could be resisting change so therefore how to make these groups respond to the change it is definitely not easy it's because uh, people have various reasons as to why they resist change so what we had done in the previous class we started looking at uh, uh, a brief uh, importance of to what is this concept called change and then various types of definitions and types of changes and we will see today few more things relating to what are the forces that stimulate change and why people resist change and then how we can make them respond to change or help them overcome resistance to change now we had started with its basic understanding that it refers to any transformation in the functioning or the cultural aspects or the design aspects of the organization then we also had seen it as an alteration to the existing status quo and we had also seen various types of changes like anticipatory changes based on certain expectations reactive changes in response to certain unexpected situations incremental changes uh, made adjustments uh, one by one step by step one by one gradually over the time and strategic changes altering the overall direction of the organization in the next 5 to 10 years where do you want to position yourself so there are various forces of change that uh, every manager must understand that what is driving change in this world so broadly it starts with the work so workforce itself because their aspirations are changing their dreams are changing their participation is changing like earlier i remember my 30 40 years ago the participation of women in the workforce was hardly 5 to 10% but today it is almost 30 to 35% very soon it is going to touch 50% not only that quite young people are joining organizations and then uh, people are dropping out of colleges they want to join workforce so therefore very few people are going for higher education you are very fortunate that you have access to higher education but quite a lot of young people are settling down with graduation and then move on to their workplaces then technology is another force which is driving change we had seen very recently due to covid our nations are adopting artificial intelligence augmented reality virtual reality and so on those kind of technologies but if until 70s we would have seen semi autonomous from 80s to 2000s it was uh, fully i mean autonomous and now it is co computer controlled uh, technologies all things are controlled by artificial intelligence <clears throat> and we really do not know there are many more kind of technologies that are emerging we had seen those technologies only in hollywood movies years years ago but they are all coming through like we had seen in the movies robots were helping people robots were uh, used in uh, hotels hospitals and so on but today it's a reality in uh, bangalore there is one hotel where they have employed robots as uh, the bearers so robots take the orders and serve the customers the first uh, hotel in our country to do that i was also told years ago that escorts heart institute who had employed robots to conduct open heart surgeries <laughs> so technology is unlimited and unbound today we are going to see with so many other in fact uh, in tedx they have also demonstrated in one of their discussions of uh, holographic uh, technology in which you are speaking here but your image your body can be felt in some part of the other side of the world and the whole audience is listening to you while you are speaking from hyderabad 
they think that you are really there and uh, you may be speaking in telugu they can hear it in english so that is what we call holographic technology which we had seen only in star trek movies but today it has become reality so whatever we dreamt of years years ago maybe 30 40 years ago it's all coming true because of technology so technology is forcing us to accept them then economic shocks particularly today you see that how the economic situation across the world that is driving us for change and then the competition is driving our hospitals for change there are quite a lot of social trends that are occurring what do you mean by social trends people's uh, lifestyles are changing the culture is changing i'm sure you would have noticed like uh, uh, the concept of uh, transgenders have become open people are openly declaring that they are transgenders ever since uh, 2019 september uh, supreme court judgment and then world politics today actually the world politics is driving the change across the world particularly the vaccines it's a political drama basically and then uh, this morning i was reading a newspaper that vaccines have definitely not worked if that is the case the new variant shouldn't have come if vaccines were working so these are some of the forces for change that you don't have any control over in fact every manager is considered to be a change agent so therefore every manager should know what kind of change he or she is anticipating to occur in his workplace there are four important uh, aspects or four important areas in which there is a need for change the first one is called the structure now as the organizations are change as the organizations are moving from one level to the other level the structures have to change what does it further mean uh, it means that you have to <clears throat> introduce new roles new positions eliminate old roles old positions the relationships have to be improved and uh, reporting relationships authority structure relationships all are gradually undergoing changes so you should also be reason is if the structure is optimized decision making will be very fast what if you have so many levels of management decisions will be very slow decisions flow down very slow communication flow down very flows down very slow and then communication goes up very slow because of multi layers so you have to anticipate or you should bring about change in those levels so that your structure is optimized as a result decision making is fast implementation is fast you can see the results very quick now we must also bring about changes in the technology so you have to adopt what kind of technologies that you want to adopt for your productivity for your organizational concerns uh, if your organization's goals business goals have to be accomplished do you think the technology would help you so think about that and then as a manager you must also know how to bring about changes in the physical setting particularly in the hospitals i have noticed in your hospital itself the traffic flow so in the peak hours i have seen somewhere in the morning around 10 11 o'clock there would be heavy traffic inside the hospital so how should you ensure that the traffic flow would be free easy and especially during this pandemic times how you can see that you know people observe covid norms so you need to bring about changes in the physical settings in fact most of the companies have brought about changes in their physical settings particularly the seating arrangements the table arrangements so that the colleagues are away from each other at least by some few distances so lot of changes are happening and then workflow you have to ensure workflow from one machine to the other machine so that arrangement also is changing we are creating lot of physical uh, amenities facilities safety uh, and then taking so many safety precautions to help employees uh, yeah particularly the 
employees are protected because of that so physical settings are undergoing tremendous change and of course people have to their attitudes have to be changed their skills have to be changed their etiquette has to be changed or basically the behavior expectation has to be changed and then quite a lot of changes that as a manager you should be anticipating is there any other besides this think about and now i'm just this is the same repetition so moving it again so now why people resist change the important aspect why do people resist change and then uh, how many types of change or how many forms of resistance to change can be uh, understood the first one is called overt and immediate resistance overt means it's open it's like challenging and it's immediate you can feel it how do they do it for example they are voicing their complaints they'll talk about any change is going to sabotage their careers their prospects so they are speaking out openly and then uh, they are engaging in certain job actions to ensure that you know they are resisting change they don't want to see that new technologies are introduced so therefore they are preoccupied with their works to avoid uh, em- managers or avoid all the superiors involvements in bringing about change implicit means not openly seen but somewhere it's hidden and it is deferred form of resistance so what do you mean by that the loss of employee loyalty and motivation that's another is another sign of resistance to change there are a lot of increased errors or mistakes committed in their workplaces that's another this uh, form of resistance then periodic absenteeism or regular absenteeism is also noticed as another form of implicit that means not openly shown that can we say that it's because of so many errors and mistakes employees are committing which means they are resisting change may not be there may be various reasons why people make errors and mistakes even if they are not equipped to handle the machines or even if they are not trained to run those uh, of in, imp- important equipment so as a result they might be making errors and mistakes but at the same time when they are resisting they want to purposefully make mistakes as a indirect sign that they want to show to the employers now could anybody understand quickly note down these points and start explaining why people resist change number 1 it's a habit i've seen some people always saying no to things anything you say they will they will always start with no that means they have developed the habit of resistance then there is also need for security so if you have to accept change probably it may destabilize your job security it may be replacing your jobs that's why you are resisting change and there can be many economic factors that if there is a new change probably your benefits may be reduced your salary may be a question or your long term benefits may go away so because of that and not only that if you accept this change probably eventually you may be replaced and as a result your family support may be questioned or you will not be able to support your family's needs and then fear of unknown what's going to happen if i accept this change many of us have this kind of issues and not only that selective information processing there's another uh, pro- way by which people resist change it's incomplete understanding so you pick up only some important information and then you visualize that it's going to have a severe effect in your career therefore you very carefully select that information as a resistance to change now there are two sources of resistance one is called individual source and the other one is called organizational source now what do you mean by individual sources as I, we have already seen the habit security uh, economic reasons lack of confidence and fear of unknown and the organizational one is called structural inertia what does it mean you are already in stable situation why do you want to change if everything is fine why should we change then group inertia is another source 
the entire group decides whether to change or not. That's why we say that's a group behavior or union behavior. The next one is, if you have to accept change, probably it might threaten your expertise. You may, f you may lose your importance as you feel. So therefore you resist change. Then it might also reduce your power. I have experienced this very many times when uh, there was a change in the job structures, I've lost power. And there were so many people reporting to me and suddenly they have disappeared. Though they, they pretend as if they are respecting me, but because I don't have any power, they avoid seeing me, they avoid coming to me. So I experienced this so many times. And then finally, resource allocation. So we may resist change because we may have to allocate resources to all other functional areas as we are responsible for those resources. So that's one of the reasons why we resist change. Now, uh, how do you educate people? There are various ways of, I'm sorry, how do you make people uh, respond to change or help them overcome resistance to change? There are various uh, strategies you can see here. As a manager, if you think that people are resisting change, you can try any one of these six strategies. The first one is continuously educate people on the importance of this change. How is it going to help them? And then communicate it very, very clearly without any doubts and suspicions. Then the second one is negotiation and agreement. Yeah, this is another interesting thing that you can promise them that if they if they are accepting change, they will be guaranteed of their job. So they can you can come to that negotiation with the employees. Then the next one is called manipulation and cooperation. These are very uh, dangerous strategies and also very difficult strategies because you you are manipulating the minds of your employees. Not very easy. What if they know that you are manipulating them? They might that they might uh, resort to severe uh, uh, actions. They might manhandle the managers. They might uh, use abusive language. They might be damaging the property of the company. So many reasons it's possible. So you cannot manipulate people. But if you want to really manipulate, you have to be extremely smart. And cooptation. That it means whoever is resisting change, you isolate those fellows and then. Uh, Talk to them personally, say that, don't resist. I will take care of your uh, needs. I'll protect you. I will take care of you. I will I will say that you'll be rewarded. So therefore, such employees will become part of uh, the management. That's what we call cooptation. So these are all political strategies, actually. These two, very difficult. Unless you are experienced, you cannot handle them. Then the fourth one is called participation as a strategy. Encourage employees to participate from day one of change management. If they are party to it from day one, they will definitely show enthusiasm and then they'll have a thorough understanding of the importance of change and therefore they move it forward. They'll start responding to it. Then the fifth one is called facilitation and support. You can always promise employees that, you know, we. We are there to help them, support them, facilitate them in the process of introducing change. Always suggest them that you are part of, you are always with them. And then finally, you can use the powerful strategy called implicit and explicit coercion. That means you are applying force either openly or sometimes innately without uh, openly showing off. You are still expressing coercion. You might write a mail to all the people that whoever is not responding to this change may be shown the way out. That's called implicit. Or explicit means you can straight away talk to them face to face. So these are some of the strategies, but you can also use combination of these strategies. Think about them. Now, uh, there are various models. Before I go to these models, I want to show uh, the it's not actually needed for all of us because these are all not part of your syllabus. But first two models, not even first two, first and the third one, I want to explain it because 
the first one is their part of your syllabus and the third one is a very powerful model because the whole world is adopting it today many organizations are adopting the third one so kurt levin's model we will see and coter's model of change both of them if we change i think we will be through with the topic so let's see what is this kurt levin's model of change now kurt levin back in 40s had suggested that first of all you should understand the mindset of the people who are resisting change and we always categorize that as employees so why are they resisting change if you want to bring about a change first of all what you must do is you have to unfreeze their mind which is already solidified so melt it so all those old habits inertia uh, fear of unknown all those things can be melted that's what we call unfreezing once you unfreeze their mindsets then you can introduce the new change that is called changing and then once they accept the change you refreeze that means strengthen their acceptance and support them move them forward and they are part it, they are also part of it that's an easiest way of introducing change what levin talks about but levin also says that it's not that easy because what he said is in any case if you want to introduce change that is called from status quo to desired state status quo means as they are today and from today where do you want to go tomorrow that is called desired state so if you want to introduce change in your organizations today you are just 100 bedded hospital you want to be 200 bedded hospital tomorrow so status quo is 100 bedded but you want to increase it to 200 so that means you have to bring about so many changes infrastructural changes physical setting changes new employees will be added new plan, new services will be added what not quite a lot of uh, changes are introduced anticipation is very high there so your status quo is 100 bits your desired state is 200 bits but what's happening uh, you are part of what is called driving force and over a time you want to introduce the change but your employees are representing restraining force forces which are preventing resisting and therefore you can see those arrows both sides the driving force is driving through arrows and the restraining force is also driving it and since both of them are equally presenting their pressure pressures or forces the status quo is maintained it doesn't change but if you want to bring about change in the status quo from this level to the desired state level that's called the desired state level the driving force have to increase its pressure and the restraining forces must be weakened how do you weaken them over the time so time is very important here so from current status it has to improve it to the desired state so you can weaken the restraining forces by manipulation co-optation coercion or we have seen few more, few strategies uh, in the earlier slides educating them communicating them negotiating and agreement agreeing with them participation strategy quite not quite a lot of these combinations you can use so that the restraining forces are weak and then you can drive it forward so once the driving forces surge forward the status quo changes to desired state so that's what kurt levin suggests but it is not as easy as the theory suggests because in reality you will see restraining forces are very very powerful because it is represented by the whole of employee community and driving forces are very few people few managers are part of it so not easy <clears throat> and that's why uh, we'll straight go to this one more model of how to introduce change john coter has written a wonderful book actually uh, you could also listen to this man's lecture on youtube very very interesting and there are so many youtube videos cartoon videos are made on this book it's like a small story book written like uh, it's a story about a group of penguins living in one uh, habitat where it's all snow around so penguins live in such habitat 
with a lot of snow around and then one day a group of penguins young penguins would be playing in the outside and one of the penguins by name fred would notice that there is a crack in a huge iceberg and then if the crack is expanded the entire iceberg will fall down and under that iceberg uh, cave so many families of penguins living so this young gentleman named fred would like to convince all the elders of the community but so many people resist him one of the elders says it doesn't matter because i am seeing this crack since a very very long time nothing happened fred is trying all his best to create that urgency to move out if we don't move out so many penguins will die fine so what we have noticed it <clears throat> that in a book called our iceberg is melting fred would notice that there is a huge crack in the iceberg which might crack and then the whole iceberg might fall on uh, the colony of penguins resulting in so much of death and destruction therefore fred having recognized this serious issue would like to alert the elders of the community and then most the elders assisting so how fred would struggle to convince all of them so john coter in a very dramatic way presented this entire book but all of them is all uh, that drama finally end, uh, ends in eight step process so once fred recognizes that there is a crack he must increase that sense of urgency and convey that to the whole uh, whole community so creating the urgency to move out is very very important point unless we create that urgency people will not respond to change <clears throat> now step 1 to step 2 once you create the sense of urgency you have to build certain teams teams who are also called champions who are willing to be part of this change program then step 3 you must develop the vision for the next level so what is this uh, change that is going to achieve so create that this vision is penguin colonies are going to be safe in a newer habitat that's what we call new habitat for a new you you can call it as a vision or a new habitat for all the young and the old penguins families that's what we call develop the vision and communicate so that all people can be one that's what we call buy in communicate so that people are willing to accept you your ideas how do you communicate there are various ways of doing it today we are using so much of technology so much of social networking but how many of us really have time to see all of that when you are preoccupied with so much of work so the communication is always late but you have to resort to various ways of communicating uh, technical uh, using technology using uh, bulletin boards news boards or through in in house radio there can be various ways by which you can do that and then once you communicate so that people are willing to then start with your empowerment so empower all the people who are into action so it has to be company wide we are introducing it so all the families have to slowly move out of this habitat so how do you do it some families may say that we are very far away from this uh, iceberg we we are we we don't need to vacate it but you have to enable them you have to help them that this is going to be a long term uh, uh, disaster you may be safe for a short time but you are losing many of us and as a result you will be alone so you have to encourage people to accept the change and then once people start accepting and moving you have to create what we call short term wins that means celebrate uh, short term achievements and then uh, don't let up that means keep doing it keep driving it 
and then once all people start until the last family leaves the habitat don't give up so that's how once they do it that means you have finally convinced you have finally achieved this concept of change the entire community moves out of this iceberg and that's what we call make that change stick that means see that you know this change is accepted and working so quarters model is very popular model across the world many organizations have adopted it so i will don't have to talk about other models because this is only for your curiosity so if you are interested what you can do you can go back and uh, examine all these models like mckinsey 7s model beer and associates model ram narayan and nilakanth model all these models in fact in one of the book chapters i have explained all of these models so i will try to share that chapter with you so that anybody who is interested might read all these models and learn from them that's for your future so that's it i'll stop here